Hi everyone, this is Dr. G. V. R. Shashir Rao, Professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. So today I want to discuss about theories of failure. So in previous sessions in this uh, solid mechanics and materials, we have discussed various uh, topics like uh, uh, simple stresses and uh, strains and uh, what is the relation between uh, elastic constants and uh, we have discussed the principal stresses and the principal strains in previous session. So how to calculate the maximum of principal stress and uh, maximum of principal strain and shear stress we have discussed in the previous uh, sessions. Now uh, we will see in this session so the theories of failure, what is the importance of theories of failure in the design of a, a mechanical component? So how to take this uh, theories, which theory is uh, uh, suitable for uh, which material? So how to select these theories of failure to avoid uh, uh, failures? For safe design always you should take the proper uh, uh, theory. So we will see all these things uh, uh, in this topic. Before entering into the topic, you should know about uh, the outcome of this uh, topic. So at the end of the course, the student should be able to demonstrate the principal stresses, principal planes and the torsional stresses acting on any arbitrary plane within a structure using analytical and uh, more circuit methods and uh, theories of failure. So in this uh, topic, the student should be able to uh, demonstrate about the principal stress and strains and the planes already we have discussed in the previous sessions. So this topic, the continuation of this uh, CO3, the outcome. So in this, uh, we will see the theories of failure. So how uh, after completion of this uh, topic, the student uh, should be able to demonstrate uh, theories of failure. So already they have learned the analytical method and the most circle method and the principal planes and the principal stresses. So only they should know about this theories of failure. So the introduction part is the theories of failure introduction when some external load is applied on a body. The stresses and strains are produced in the body. Already you know uh, about uh, stresses and strains. We have discussed in the uh, introduction part uh, in simple stresses and strains. So whenever some external load is applied in the body, suppose this is a object, this is a body, the subject are two tails in load. So this is external load. The stresses and strains are produced in the body. Due to this uh, load, some deformation will be occurred. Some disturbance occurred in the inside of the body. So, like this. So, it means it uh, the elongated, the original, uh, the, the original length is L and this one is after uh, elongation. So, it is uh, delta L change in length. So first one is, so you can take otherwise L and L1, L1 is the after deformation. So this means when the load is removed, the body will return to its original shape. Uh, there is no permanent deformation and the body means that is an elastic nature. The stresses are directly proportional to the strain within the elastic limit. Up to certain limit, the stresses are directly proportional to strain you know the stress is directly proportional to strain. So you can write uh, this uh, the stress uh, directly proportional to strain relation with L4 for elastic constant that is modulus of elasticity. So this relation uh, is uh, states Hooke's law. So already we have discussed. So whenever 
some external load is applied on the body the stresses and strains produced in the body and the stresses are directly proportional to strains within the elastic limit only whenever you remove the load it will return to its original shape so that is called elastic nature there is no permanent deformation if occupied permanent deformation means that is in plastic state the plastic zone so elongate so apply load you keep on increasing the load on this body what will happen after certain limit after elastic limit the component will fail due to the the permanent deformation at this stage it does not regain its original shape that is uh, plasticity so there is the these elasticity and plasticity properties are mechanical properties of a material so very important in a uh, uh, selection of materials so in this uh, theory uh, theories of failure if the stress produced in the body due to the application of the load is behind the elastic limit so whenever you keep on increasing the load it will fail after certain limit to avoid this failure so how to uh, um, avoid and uh, how to minimize it say the, all these things says there is a failure if the stress produced in the body due to application of the load is behind the elastic limit the permanent deformation occur in the body behind the elastic limit already i told you whenever the permanent deformation occur in the body the body is said to have failed so this should be clear that failure does not mean rupture of the body so it means due to permanent deformation occur in the body the body is said to have failed the failure doesn't does not mean the rupture of the body see there are certain theories to explain the cause of failure these failures so the certain theories are there to explain this type of failures according to the important theories the failure takes place when a certain limiting value is reached by one of the following so i will show you here uh, theories so different theories are there to explain the cause of failure second so into the, the important theories the failure takes place so when a certain value is uh, limiting value is reached by the following uh, theories so different theories are there one is the maximum principal stress theory and the maximum principal strain theory so you know in previous uh, sessions we have discussed about this principal stress and uh, principal strains shear stress so here the first theory is the number 1 the maximum principal stress theory what this theory says uh, we will see the maximum principal strain theory the third theory maximum shear stress and the maximum strain uh, strain energy theory for number 5 the maximum strain energy theory these are important uh, theories uh, behind this uh, failure so explain the uh, cause of uh, failure of these theories so one by one uh, we will see the first one is the maximum principal stress theory so according to this theory the failure of material will occur when the maximum principal tensile stress so you know the tensile stress sigma 1 in the complex system reaches the value of the maximum stress at the elastic limit in simple tension or the minimum principal stress so that is the maximum principal compressive stress reaches the value of the the maximum stress at the elastic limit in simple compression so what it says the failure of a material will occur when the maximum principal stress in the complex system reaches 
So that value is equal to the maximum stretch at the elastic limit in simple tension. So whenever you tested the specimen under simple tension test by using UTM, universal testing machine. So that is or the minimum principal stress of the maximum stress or the elastic limit in simple compression. So it means let us take sigma t is a tensile stress as elastic limit in simple tension and sigma c is the compressive stress at elastic limit in simple compression. So it may be tensile or compressive. Then, according to this theory, the failure will take place whenever the sigma 1 greater than or equal to sigma t in simple tension. Sigma 1 greater than or equal to simple uh, tension uh, uh, stress at, uh, at the elastic limit in simple tension test are equal or greater than. So, the failure takes place whenever this uh, equal or greater than. Failure condition. For safe condition, it should, should, should not be greater than and equal. It should be less than the simple tensile test uh, tension, tension, uh, tension value. So, similarly, the sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma c in simple compression test where sigma 3 mod represents the absolute value of sigma 3. So that hence the sigma 1 is equal to sigma t and where sigma t is the permissible stress and is given by the tensile stress is equal to sigma t star upon factor of safety. What is this star sigma t star? Is the tensile stress at elastic limit in fin simple tension. This is tensile stress, principal tensile stress. So that the factor of safety is equal to sigma t star by sigma t. Sigma t is a simple tensile stress. So this is the maximum stress is a working stress. So, it can be stand up to this uh, maximum stress, but working or design stress is sigma t. So, always this value should be less than the maximum uh, stress. So, beyond this stress, the component will fail. Thus, so, this theory is suitable for the safe design of mission components made of brittle materials under all loading conditions triaxial or biaxial or x and y direction or triaxial x, y, z. So, because brittle materials are weak in tension, only suitable for safe design of machine components made of brittle materials. So, next this theory is not suitable for the safe design of machine components made of ductile materials because ductile materials are weak in shear. So, metal materials are weak in tension and uh, the shear, uh, the ductile materials are weak in shear. So, not suitable. So, only suitable for metal materials. And one more point, this theory can be suitable for the safe design of machine components made of ductile materials under following state of stress condition. So, what is this uh, stress condition? So, the stress condition, what is that st under st following state of uh, stress condition means? This uh, sigma t is equal to sigma t star by factor of safety. So, that the sigma 1 greater than or equal to sigma t in simple according to this theory, the failure will take place. So, we avoid this for safe design sigma 1 
gather and equal to sigma t star. So always the working stress, this is sigma t, less than uh, this uh, ultimate stress. Here ultimate stress is tension stress at uh, elastic limit in simple tension. Clear? So next one is, next theory, the maximum principal strain theory. This theory is also known as saint Venant theory. So according to this theory, the failure of a material will occur in a material when the maximum principal strain reaches the strain due to heel stress in simple tension or when the minimum principal strain that is the maximum compressor strain. It reaches the strain due to heel stress in simple compression. So this uh, theory also known as the Saint Vinand uh, uh, theory. So according to this theory, the failure of material will occur in a material when the maximum principal strain reaches the strain due to heel stress in simple tension test or the minimum principal strain theory. So in this, uh, this first theory, the maximum principal theory is also called as Rankine's theory. This theory is Rankine's theory. Another name of this uh, principal stress. So similarly here, the principal strain theory is Saint uh, Maynard theory. So here, the condition is the failure of a material will occur in a material when the maximum principal strain reaches the strain due to heel stress. So the condition for failure, the failure, the maximum principal strain, zeta 1, greater than heel strain, yielding strain under tensile stress. So that is, the condition is, written like this, the sigma 1 greater than. So whenever the maximum principal strain is greater than the yielding strain under a tensile stress, the component will fail. For safe design, for safe design, less than, less than a less than the heel point, heel yielding strain under tensile stress. That is you can write heel stress by E. So you can write why because according to Wick's law the stress is directly proportional to strain. So, SYT is equal to E strain. Thanks modulus, modulus of rigid, modulus of elasticity. So, the principal strain in the direction of principal stress sigma 1 the J eta is equal to 1 by E into sigma 1 minus uh, mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3. You can write 1 by E sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3. But triaxial uh, stresses. Principal strain in the direction of principal stress uh, sigma 3. The strain is equal to, you can write uh, 1 by E is equal to sigma 3 mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 2. So these are the condition, uh, the, the principal strains 
in the direction of uh, sigma 1 and uh, sigma 3. So, what is the condition for safe design? So, you, you have already, uh, I told you, the condition for safe design is uh, the less than the strain, maximum principal strain should not be greater than the yielding strain under tensile stress. So, the maximum principal strain less than or equal to permissible strain, that is the, the, this condition for safe design. So, the permissible strain is equal to yielding strain under tensile test or factor of safety. Uh, sorry, under tensile stress upon factor of safety. The shown here. The factor of safety is here n. This is a factor of safety. So, here the principal strain in the direction of uh, uh, stress uh, sigma 1 is equal to eta 1 greater than the stress upon E. This is this is permissible uh, strain. This is uh, called permissible strain or working strain. So, you can say here permissible strain. So, sigma 3 greater than uh, in compression in this uh, direction of principal stress uh, 3, sigma 3. So, now you can write these equations. Uh, like this or the sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 greater than the permissible strain, permissible uh, stress and uh, then you can write this equation sigma 3 mu into sigma 1 plus sigma 2 greater than sigma e c. So, this is the permissible strain yielding, uh, the permissible strain means yielding strain under tensile stress of a factor of safety. So, whenever you divide with the factor of safety, so it, it gives the strain, uh, the yielding strain under the tensile load, tensile test. It gives permissible strain to prevent failure. To prevent failure, so this should not be greater than or it should be less than. So that's why the condition for safe design written the maximum principal strain less than or equal to permissible strain. So at the point of elastic failure, sigma 1 minus mu into sigma 2 plus sigma 3 is equal to sigma e at elastic limit to that uh, stress and in the direction of sigma 3 in the direction of sigma 1 strain. So, this theory or estimate the behavior of ductile materials. This theory does not fit well with the experimental results except for better materials for biaxial tension, compression state of stress and is not much used in practice. This theory estimates the bear of ductile material. So, the third theory is the maximum shear stress theory. So, this theory is due to Guest and uh, Tuska. These, these, these two are uh, scientists derived this uh, 
we uh, say theory and therefore this theory is known as uh, guest theory so according to this theory the failure of a material will occur when the maximum shear stress in the material reaches the value of maximum shear stress in simple tension test in simple tension test at the elastic limit according to this theory the failure of a material will occur when the maximum shear stress reaches the value of maximum shear stress uh, simple tension test at the elastic So the maximum shear stress in the material is equal to of the difference between the maximum and minimum principal stress. So you know now the maximum and uh, minimum principal stresses are sigma one and uh, sigma two. So the difference between these two, the sigma one minus sigma two by two, it gives the maximum shear stress. If sigma one and sigma two and sigma three are principal stresses at a point in a material, the tri triaxial flow uh, stresses, sigma t is the principal stress in a simple tension test at the elastic limit. Then the maximum shear stress in the material is equal to the half the half of the difference of maximum and minimum principal stresses here maximum and minimum in triaxial case so you can write half into sigma 1 minus sigma 3 but in biaxial in biaxial case here triaxial loading for biaxial loading biaxial stress or loading Half into sigma one minus sigma two. So in case of simple tension at the elastic limit, the principal stresses at sigma t, the principal stresses are sigma t in simple tension and the stress is existing in one direction only. So in case of simple tension, the elastic limit and the principal stresses are zero, zero comma zero. So zero comma sorry. The limit principal stresses are j sigma t and other conditions are uh, other two zero zero. So in simple tension, the stress is existing in one direction only. Clear? So that you can write. So the maximum uh, shear stress uh, theory. The 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 maximum uh, condition, the difference of maximum and minimum principal stresses is equal to simple tension at elastic limit. So why? Because here in simple tension, the stress is existing in uh, one direction only. That's why the sigma 3 is equal to 0. So that in this case, you can write, you can write the maximum minimum principal stress off into sigma 1 minus 0. So, of sigma 1. See, here uh, written. So, the maximum shear stress in simple tension at elastic limit off of the difference between the maximum min minimum tensile stress. But, that this direction is sigma t. The sigma 1 direction is sigma t in simple tension so that you can write of the sigma t for the failure of material the difference uh, between the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 greater than and equal to half of the sigma t or sigma 1 minus sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma t. So, you can write this equation of into sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma t. 
So here, yeah, two to get cancelled here, yeah, sigma t, sigma 1 or sigma 3 greater than or equal to sigma t. So for actual design, instead of sigma t, that is uh, tensile stress in a simple tension, the allowable stress in a simple tension should be considered sigma t. So, where the sigma t is equal to sigma t star upon factor of safety. The actual design, this is a sigma t star that is a actual uh, tensile stress, but the allowable stress, the working stress in simple tension is uh, considered as sigma t is equal to sigma t star by factor of safety. So, according to the factor of safety, the maximum stress or maximum load upon by working stress, working stress or design stress, the allowable stress, so that you can write the allowable stress is equal to maximum stress upon factor of safety. So, here it represents sigma t star with the, the actual design. The actual design uh, the, means the actual load we stand the maximum load. But you are uh, applying load at uh, in a simple tension test. So, that is considered as a allowable load. That is a uh, actual uh, design load, actual design load or working uh, load. So, according to you can uh, take the factor of safety to avoid a failure. So, hence the for design you can take sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is uh, uh, sigma t. So, here yeah, sigma t is used. The that is in design. The maximum shear stress in simple tension test at elastic limit is equal to half of the difference of maximum and minimum principal stresses. So, already we have discussed it here. So, once again you see that uh, relations sigma uh, half into sigma t star minus sigma 3. So, but in the in, the, in case uh, uh, the, in uh, in one direction only the whenever it is in simple tension test so that is case the sigma 3 0 so we will get uh, sigma t star by 2 so the failure of material the conditions are sigma 1 minus sigma 3 greater than equal to sigma t so now we have discussed about uh, the maximum uh, shear stress theory and uh, the conditions clear and uh, the maximum principal strain theory and uh, what is the condition and then principal stress theory. So, in this session we have discussed about theories of failure. So, the according to uh, the principal stress theory the condition is the sigma 1 greater than or equal to sigma t in simple tension, this is failure condition. To avoid this failure, this is a safe design. Safe design uh, condition is sigma 1 less than or equal to sigma t star. So, it indicates the tensile stress at elastic limit in simple tension is always should be greater than the this uh, principal stress. So, what is this uh, principal stress? Sigma maximum principal tensile stress that is sigma 1. Clear okay, this and uh, also important uh, things are the principal stress theory. This theory is suitable for the safe design of machine components made of brittle materials only, not for ductile materials. So, under Triaxial loads and biaxial loads. So, in the case of biaxial, sigma 1 and sigma t we will consider and triaxial sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3. 
And another one important thing is the brittle materials are weak in tension. And second theory, the maximum principle stress theory. So in this, I have discussed about uh, the conditions and then the suitability. This is uh, not suitable for brittle materials. So it is only for ductile materials. Because the ductile materials are weak in tension. This theory can be suitable for safe design of machine components made of ductile materials under the following state of uh, conditions. So the principal strain theory is called as saint venance theory. This theory says the failure of a material will occur in a material when the maximum principal strain reaches the strain due to heat stress in a simple tension or when the minimum principal strain that is the maximum compressor strain reaches the strain due to heat stress in a simple compression. So the condition for failure the strain, the maximum principal strain greater than yielding strain under a tensile test. The condition written, the strain greater than or equal to yielding strain under tensile test. So for safe design, you can write the strain should be less than the yielding strain under tensile test. So here I shown this, uh, this condition. So the principal strain in the direction of principal stress uh, sigma 1 uh, uh, given in this uh, equation and principal strain in the direction of principal stress uh, shown. and then condition for safe design. So in this, the condition for safe design, the maximum principal strain less than or equal to permissible strain. Remember this uh, condition. The permissible strain, how do you calculate? The heating strain under tensile test upon the factor of safety. It gives permissible strain. So that this strain, this permissible strain should be greater than the principal strain value. So it means the maximum principal strain always should be less than the permissible strain. So then only the component will be in safe, the design is safe. Otherwise, uh, the component uh, will fail. Provide this, use this uh, condition. So the, the, this theory says uh, like this, the maximum principal strain theory. So whenever the principal strain theory is greater than the principal strain, because that is a failure, uh, condition for failure. To avoid failure, you should maintain this uh, principal strain value is less than the principal st permissible strain. So the equations are written here already we have discussed the prevent failures you know at the point of elastic failure and then strain theory. So we are discussing strain theory only sorry this theory Behavior, the power estimate the behavior of ductile materials. So, does not uh, fit well with the experimental results. Except for uh, brittle materials. So, biaxial tension compression, the state of stress and is not much used in practice. This theory is also called as guest theory. So, according to this theory, the failure of material will occur 
rent of maximum shear stress in material reaches the value of the maximum shear stress in the simple tension at the elastic limit. So, the maximum shear stress in the material is equal to half the difference between the maximum and the minimum principal stress. So, the equation at this point, the formulas are written. So, here the shear maximum is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 by 2. So, here in simple tension test, the stress is existing in one direction only. So, that the remaining uh, 2 can 2 are 0. In case of triple tension, the elastic constant, uh, elastic limit, the principal stresses are sigma t 0 comma 0. Sigma 1 and 2 and 3. Okay. So, the equations are written here the maximum shear stress in simple tension test uh, at elastic limit is equal to half of the difference of maximum and minimum of principal stresses. So, the for actual design instead of uh, sigma t, the allowable stress in uh, simple tension should be considered and uh, written for a design is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to sigma t. So, where the sigma t is the principal st stress, shear stress uh, is equal to factor of safety is equal to sigma t star upon by factor of safety. These are the uh, important theories of failure. While designing a component, any component, if you want to design any component, you should consider the theories of failure. If you not consider these theories of failure, the component will fail. That is, uh, uh, that is not a, uh, not a safe design. A failure design. To avoid failures, use these uh, theories. So that you, you have learned about uh, principal stresses and uh, principal strains and uh, what, what are the triaxial stresses, uh, triaxial loads and biaxial uniaxial uh, direction. Okay, how to calculate the maximum uh, normal stress and the minimum normal stress and principal stresses and the shear stresses on inclined planes. All these things we have learned. So, without knowing these, all these things, if you have designed any component, you, you can't design. Suppose if you design, the component 100% will be fail. Why? Because you are not following any theories. And factor of safety is also important to avoid the failure. For safe design, always you should consider factor of safety. Without taking factor of safety, you can't design. So similarly, for designing for any component, machine component, or mechanical component, you should consider some theories. So, that is why the scientists are developed these theories. So, in this session, we have discussed the principal stress and the strain and maximum shear stress theory. So, total we have theories in a starting in this slide I shown five theories. The maximum principal stress theory, and uh, maximum principal strain theory over and uh, strain shear stress also discussed. So, up to now in this section, we have discussed about these three theories. So, these three theories are completed. In the next sessions, so I will discuss about uh, this uh, strain energy theory and the maximum strain energy theory, shear strain energy theory. So, total five theories are their important theories. So, in next session, we will see the maximum strain energy and then shear strain energy theory. So, for this PPT, I have taken uh, references 
S. Ramamrutam. The book title, the author of the book is S. Ramamrutam, and title of the book is Tenth of Materials. The publishers are Dhanpati Rai Publishing Company. And R. K. Rajput, other name, and title of the book is Tenth of Materials. And uh, publishers are S. and Co. And uh, the publishing year edition is 2007. So, latest version also um, available. You can uh, refer any uh, recent editions also. So, the but uh, the other and the title of the book is important. The archive bonds are the test book of strength of materials, the title of the book, and the others Kurmi and Gupta, others names, and uh, the title of the book is strength of materials. So, these are the references I have taken for preparing this uh, PPT. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.